As one Saiyan rivalry closed, another one is about to begin. Hey guys, Dean right here, and today I'm continuing with what if Gine, the mother of Goku, survived? And carrying on right where we left off after Gine's epic battle with Lord Beerus, Gine having the Super Saiyan God power up, which of course differentiates from the original where um, her son Goku had it originally. After all, this is what if Gine, the mother of Goku, survived and how she would affect the overall story. And since then, she's basically, once again, resettled back into her life, um, cooking for a family, basically just being a family gal. Now, mind you, um, something has happened in between Whis's, you know, constant visits to Capsule Corp, sneaking in food while Lord Beerus is back asleep, and that is the peaceful passing of Grandpa Gohan. Grandpa Gohan, who peacefully just passed away in his sleep one night, and naturally, Kine and um, Kakarot were really grieving the loss. After all, Grandpa Gohan was like a grandfather figure to Kakarot, and almost like an adopted father figure to Kine. So, naturally, they are really feeling quite a big loss and it's made Gine think that you know she just wants to live her life in peace and with her family just like she always wanted much like how Grandpa Gohan lived his life and um well but this sort of gets under Bardock's nerves a little bit. After all, you know, she's been given the opportunity to train with the being that trained Beerus the Destroyer. And she's just turning it down. You know, she's by far the strongest Saiyan there. And, you know, which Bardock is having difficulty accepting right now as it is, being considering that back when they lived together on planet Vegeta, you know, Gine was the weakest Saiyan in history, yet now, she's by far the strongest. And she is not even keen to um, do this training with this otherworldly deity-like being. Bardock is quite annoyed by this, but after Kakarot talked to Gine and convinced her, you know, it's just training, there's no threat to the planet or anything, you can just relax and just go at it your own way. And it'll be like old times when we used to train together. And that did, that did sound nice to Gine, training with her young son all those years back in the um, earlier arcs of this what if back when the adventures of Dragon Ball were just starting. Those were good times, sparring with her son and everything. So, why not? Kine decides she will do, she will train this time. However, she's wanting this to be the last time. And Bardock is getting key, is um, key, keen to get some training in as well. Wanting to go along, but we says, no, no, only, only Gine, Kakarot, and Prince Vegeta at this point. I don't think I could handle training the whole lot of you together. And well, but you can imagine Bardock is definitely feeling a bit angry and bitter that he's being left out. And so is Raditz, his oldest boy. After all, there was a time where um, Bardock and Raditz were the two strongest in their family. And now, they're equally the weakest of their family. You know, even Barney, when she goes berserk as Super Saiyan, has power beyond Raditz and Bardock. And, um, as for, um, Raditz's daughter, Ranch, and yes, the same, the, the one and the same Ranch from the Musco X What Ifs, you guys wanted this a few parts back. Even, um, Ranch is, um, more or less on the verge of um, surpassing the two of them. Now, anyway, continuing on with our story, 
So Bardock basically decides he and Raditz are going to take a little bit of a space trip. While Gine and Kakarot are off having the time of their lives getting stronger, this opportunity will not be wasted. Bardock has this sort of interesting training idea where they might, they might just be able to close a bit of that power gap between him and his youngest son and his wife. And uh, Raditz is not sure whether or not to go along with this after, after all. He's got quite the demanding wife in um, Launch. But um, as soon as um, Launch sneezes, it just goes, you know what, Raditz? Just go on ahead. <laughs> you show Kakarot and your mother just how strong you can be, hey? After all, I do not want a weak husband. And I'm sure Ranch doesn't want a weak father. That's right. So, with that, Raditz basically agrees that, yep, Bardock and Raditz will be going into space for a little while. And, um, well, they basically make Bulma hand over the capsule free ship. And, you know, she doesn't know what these two are up to, but it's best to, you know, stay on the good side of, um, two Saiyans. And so, with that, they blast off into the cosmos. And meanwhile, Vegeta, Kakarot, and Gine are going through the same training regiment that Vegeta and Kakarot go through in the original arc. Essentially, wearing those um, ridiculous training, carrying those really heavy weights around and running laps around Beerus's planet before um, parts of it could disappear and they fall to their doom. Or fall into nothingness, you know, whatever the explanation was there. And, um, yeah, and ultimately Whis breaking waking up and sending them to that dimension, you know, wanting faster results. Of course, this leads to the Saiyans eating his um, secret stash of pizzas, of earthly pizzas, which Beerus is not too happy about this. And, um, well, in the meantime, though, back on Earth, Sorbet and his men have risked a journey to Earth to use the Dragon Balls in order to resurrect Freezer, much like they do in the original, and it's um, successful successful thanks to um, the Pilaf gang's assistance and um, yep Freezer is brought back and is um, has been recovered inside the um, recovery tank the healing capsules or whatever they call yeah healing chambers thank you and so Freezer is um, made whole once again, and has decided, after being filled in, that the Saiyans, that the Saiyan that bested him on Namek, in this case, Gine, is, um, in fact, a lot stronger than what she was originally. That, you know, they apparently stopped Margin Boo from being awakened. It was like, you telling me that Gine beat that Boo? Hmm. Very well. It would seem that I, myself, may have to do a bit of training. If those Saiyans could get so strong, just imagine how much stronger I could be. I was born with this power. I never needed to train. <laughs> how much stronger am I going to become now? And so she's off. Oh, did I just call Freezer a she? Yes, I did. He, Freezer, is off training for those two months, much like he does in the original. Now, Bardock and Raditz have landed on some deserted planet that's no life on it whatsoever so they could go all out here without having to worry about you know killing anyone or anything it's got an atmosphere fear that they can breathe but essentially there's no you know no civilizations or anything like that there so with um, a bit of training that they're doing on the planet some sparring sessions and whatnot so, Father, what exactly is this trading you had in mind? Because so far, we're just doing the same things. Well, au contraire, Raditz, we're getting used to this Super Saiyan form. However, now the real training begins. And Bardock powers up an energy ball in his hand. 
and fires it into a sky, creating an artificial moon. Remember, they're both in their Super Saiyan forms here, and I think you know where I'm going with this. Both of them transformed into golden third Super Saiyan great apes. And since Bardock has very much complete control of his great ape form, he's able to push it further and complete the transformation into Super Saiyan 4. Yes, Super Saiyan 4, we are getting elements of Dragon Ball GT in this what if. And I thought, why not? Super Saiyan 4 is a pretty cool transformation. And why not? And it is something that could potential, potentially rival the likes of what Gine and Bardock, uh, Gine, Kakarot and Vegeta are about to achieve. Which of course is Super Saiyan Blue. And, um, well Raditz, since he hasn't used the Great Ape form in years and has never been quite in control of himself, not to the levels like Nappa and Vegeta. However, with Bardock there sort of guiding him and ringing him in, Raditz is able to pull off the transformation as well. So we've got Super Saiyan 4 Raditz and Super Saiyan 4 Bardock. And well, with this, um, with them now getting used to their Super Saiyan 4 transformations and training together, they pretty much decide it's pretty much time to head back to their planet. And they can't wait to spring this on everybody. However, that opportunity may come sooner rather than later because Frieza is on his way to the planet as well. Bardock and Raditz get there first, so don't worry about that. And Frieza is now basically arrived and commencing his attack. And much like in the original, the Dragon Team are pretty much taking out the henchmen, no problem. And well, pretty much right up until Piccolo sacrificing himself to, to save Gohan like he does in the original, taking on that guy who was um, pretty much helped Frieza out with his training that got him freakishly strong. Yeah, I keep forgetting that guy's name. Anyway, you know who I'm talking about, the guy Ginyu takes over. Which yes, that still happens in the story. And then, that this is when Bardock and Raditz decide to spring their new trick on everyone. Bardock and Raditz power up to their Super Saiyan 4 and pretty much make short work of Captain Ginyu. Now meanwhile, Bulma's excessive messages to Whis about the Strawberry Sunday have finally got through to him and they find out that Lord Frieza is in the middle of attacking the planet and that Gine, Vegeta and and Kakarot should make their way to the planet as quickly as they can. Now remember in the previous arc when Gine and Bardock went off into space on their own, Gine was able to learn instant transmission during that time, getting tra training from um, on planet Yardbrat. So she's able to use instant transmission to bring them to the battlefield and to their surprise they're seeing Bardock, at least these two beings who seem to look like Bardock, Bardock and Raditz, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lord Freezer in his final form. And, um, and let's be honest, we've always wanted to um, see this, a battle between, a proper battle between Bardock and Freezer. And um, yeah, now once Freezer pretty much powers up to his golden form, this is where Bardock begins to have a little bit of trouble battling with Freezer. After all, he had been Super Saiyan 4 before and um, had to deal with Captain Ginyu first. And well, Bardock, um, Gine, Kakarot and Vegeta are thinking about getting involved here, but Bardock is just angrily shouting at Gine, Don't you dare interfere with this battle! Freezer is mine! After what he did to my friends! Referring to, you know, his old Freeze, his um, planet elite force, Varsha, Borgo, Shugesh, and Varsha. 
So yes, this is more or less a personal battle. And Raditz, looking just as um, serious, yes, don't you get involved. We will handle this. And well, with um, Raditz and Bardock working together, yes, it turns out Freezer cannot handle two Super Saiyan 4s. And ultimately, just like in the original, his um, golden form begins to um, overwhelm him. His body is not used to the strain that the um, that much energy is um, putting out. So, ultimately, this ends with um, Freezer's golden form being deactivated, and um, well, Kine notices a certain little sorbet lurking around the corners, trying to get a sniper shot in on her son and Bardock. Gine's not having any of this, and Gine basically takes out Sorbet right then and there. Bardock and Rats being confused with what's happened, but notices a uh, dead Sorbet sort of lying there, and basically realize what Gine had just done. So okay, never mind, back to the battle. And so, with that, father and son together power up one final attack and vaporize Lord Freezer. Freezer doesn't get the chance to blow up planet Earth like he does in the original. So no temporal time skip. So yeah, no glory hog Goku to power up to Super Saiyan Blue and take out Freezer with a Kamehameha this time. No, Bardock and Raditz have earned that victory. It would be a pretty dick move if we say had Gine charge in at the last second, finishing off Freezer with a Kamehameha. Ultimately, at the end of this battle and everyone gets their big victory meal, Gine can't help but feel impressed that Raditz and Bardock were able to um, essentially almost completely bridge the gap between their power and that they were able to do it on their own. They didn't need Weiss's help. They found a way to reach a level that they could achieve on their own. And well, with that, basically they decided that after this um, whole meal was done, Beerus and Whis go back to their go back to their go back to their world. Bardock and Gine and Raditz and Kakarot are going to have a bit of a matchup between them, and I think that's where we're going to leave things for right now. So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this story? Who will win in this family tag team matchup? Will it be Team Gine or Team Bardock? Super Saiyan 4 versus Super Saiyan Blue. We will find this out next time as we continue with What If Gine, the mother of Goku, survived. <laughs>